So a few of you have been posting comments and or sending me messages about doing a video on incense and rose as a prominent featured notes and fragrances. And you know, I've been noticing that there have been fragrances launching that do feature these notes together. Most specifically, this particular fragrance from Amouage called Rose Incense. So I thought, you know what, let's go through my list of fragrances to see if there are any fragrances that I own. Yes, I have plenty of them here. There's a total of 16 in a top 15 list plus a bonus after the outro. So if you want to find out about fragrances featuring rose and incense or incense and rose prominently, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in, this is Sebastian. And yes, today I'm talking about incense and rose, or rose and incense and fragrances. What a great combo, right? You know, I still prefer oud and rose, and I still prefer patchouli and rose, but incense and rose really, really does work. In fact, one of my favorite fragrances that's featured in this video, you probably have heard me talk a lot about this particular fragrance, pretty much focuses on rose and incense with some other notes as well. So I've got 15 of them plus that bonus. This is a ranked video. And the way I'm ranking this list is uh, the it's, it's not only because of my favorites that are at the top, but also how much incense and rose is there in a fragrance. So some fragrances might not feature as much incense, just rose. So those are ranked a little lower, but the more incense and rose together prominently are at the top, but also I was factoring how much do I like a fragrance and do not. Anyway, before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So let's get started. This is going to go as fast as I can. First fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Tom Ford. This is Cafe Rose this one right here. So this is a fragrance that is, co you know, coffee with rose. But yes, it does have a uh, you know, incense uh, note in it as well. But the incense in here is not as prominent as some of the other fragrances that are going to be featured. But you definitely, you know, pick that up. There is an incense touch, lightly smoky, but more resin incense like frankincense comes in to this fragrance and you know it contrasts with the other prominent notes in here. So it features May Rose, Turkish Rose, Bulgarian Rose, so it's a chock full of a bunch of roses along with patchouli, coffee, incense, and sandalwood. So it's mostly about the rose with the coffee and the patchouli, but that incense comes in and gives it a contrast. Check that out if you don't know it. I don't know the status of this fragrance. Is it still a selling fragrance or have they discontinued it? I I don't know. The next fragrance we're talking about is from the house of Amouage, and I'm not talking about rose incense. They do have another fragrance that features rose prominently, but not the incense, incense as prominently. We're going with Lyric Man, this one right here, and even though this is mostly about the, the rose with the lime and the bergamot and the musk, there is some incense in here and it does cut through the, the freshness and adds a kind of a lightly smoky resinous uh, frankincense type uh, touch to the fragrance. It is one of my favorite rose fragrances. I absolutely love it, but it's definitely more of a fresh fragrance with some substance. And the, the rose in here is jammy, and then it contrasts beautifully with that lime. There's a juicy, citrusy, green uh, quality running throughout it, contrasted with the rose. But lots of rose, lime, bergamot, musk, incense, angelica, pine, ginger, saffron, and sandalwood. A great, great fragrance. It's not overly incensey, it's not overly smoky, but it's there, it's noticeable, but kind of a, you know, a secondary player, not a, a prominent player. So that's why it's ranked at number 14. So Amouage Lyric Man, check that out if you don't know it. And it is Lyric Man targeted to men. I think women can totally pull that one off. This next fragrance might be a little complicated to get, but I wanted to feature it here because it is a, a recent fragrance I picked up from the house of um, Diptyque. It's a limited edition. It's Kyoto, this one right, right here. And I do see this here, you know, selling here and there. So I, I don't know if it's completely gone yet or not but you might be able to get your hands on this one. Now this is a very, very unique fragrance in that it features beetroot uh, as a note. So if you like beets and fragrances, kind of a vegetally, vegetable-y kind of uh, 
uh, note, but fruity nuances as well. Definitely check this one out. But it's loads of beetroot, vetiver, Turkish rose, and incense. And once again, it's not a necessarily a very prominent incense experience, but it's definitely happening here. Uh, I think the main star is the beetroot, but uh, the vetiver and the Turkish rose definitely have some prominence. And then that incense comes in to give it a little bit of a resinous, um, lightly smoky quality. It definitely works here. I think the, the way the fragrance is composed is perfect. You don't need much more incense in this. The rose is... Um, a little jammy but not overly and then that bad and then the vetiver in here has that kind of grassiness which makes it perfect so diptyques kyoto check it out if you can still check it out the next fragrance i'm talking about is from the house of dunhill this is arabian desert this one right here anybody know this one so arabian desert is that very middle eastern style fragrance and it, it's got oud in it. It's got lots of different, you know, Middle Eastern style fragrance notes. You know, the amber, the rose, the incense, saffron, oud, all of it combined together to create this very, very beautiful and uh, very Middle Eastern style essence, uh, you know, uh, as a fragrance. But it is targeted male. I don't think it's uh, necessarily should be just considered as a male scent because... Um, fragrances like this are out there as unisex targeted so it doesn't really scream masculine is what i'm trying to say but you know it's it's uh, lots of amber with rose then incense comes in and it is definitely noticeable here you definitely notice the incense but not very very strong because i think the amber rose oud actually are what's really running the show then you know saffron and incense comes in and adds the kind of like the secondary players with the fragrance saffron gives it a very a very uh, aromatic and uh, spicy leathery kind of a uh, quality to the fragrance and then the incense has a kind of a lightly smoky uh, resinous uh, quality against the rose and the amber basically i think for me this is more of an amber with rose incense oud saffron leather things like that check that out dunhill's arabian desert i think it's quite nice definitely not uh, overly masculine. The next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Frederick Mall. Once again, I'm not talking about the main one that's at the, the top. This is, and there's another fragrance in this collection that has rose and incense. This is Superstitious right here. So Superstitious, uh, I think is a great fragrance focusing on loads of aldehydes. But in addition to the aldehydes, You've got jasmine, you've got rose, and you've got incense. So no oud in this one. It's mostly about flowers of, you know, the jasmine and the, the rose. And then that incense comes in. There is a smoky touch running throughout this particular fragrance. But contrasted with the aldehydes, it makes it a little bit airy, uh, a little lift, you know, gives it kind of a lift to the notes. And it doesn't make it kind of very, very heavy, even though I feel like there are some heavier notes in the base as it's drying down. You definitely have some vetiver, patchouli. And then there's some ambery touches as well, but it's a gorgeous fragrance. I think it works perfectly. Uh, incense uh, against the, the, the aldehydes here, kind of like an airy, fizzy, and then of course dense and uh, resinous, uh, lightly smoky with the incense. Works great. Contrast it with that beautiful, uh, jammy, intense rose in here and the jasmine. Beautiful fragrance. This is Superstitious from the House of Frederick Mall. Let me know if you've tried that one. It's definitely not of the more not not one of the more more popular fragrances. It's definitely a little underrated, but it's really really a solid uh, release. The next fragrance I'm talking about is from the House of Vince Camuto. Don't speak about this house too much. And I've also, I don't know what the status of this particular fragrance is. At one time, I bought two of the Ouds from Vince Camuto for around 35, 40 bucks. I think the prices might have gone up, but I'm going to feature it because it's called Smoked Oud and it features rose with smoke and incense. This is it right here, Vince Camuto Smoked Oud. I think it's a pretty solid release for a oud fragrance from a designer uh, it's targeted male but I, I think it's totally uh i think it's a unisex offering for me this fragrance kind of reminds me a little bit of rosé all day from gallagher fragrances but it features loads of rose smoke incense amber oud tonka 
spices and juniper. Very interesting that it reminds me a little bit of uh, rosé all day. There is a little bit of a gourmand edge to it and I think it's the tonka and amber together kind of giving me a light gourmandish kind of a quality with rose. If you like that fragrance you can find this, check that out. It's definitely not having that kind of apple crisp like uh, touches that uh, rosé all day does but more about the rose and the incense and um, the smoke and the oud together kind of a uh, playing wonderfully with uh, the amber and the tonka beans again the smokiness uh, is uh, there but I think I'm getting more smoke from the smoke note incense can come off uh, smoky but in this case it's lightly smoky and a resinous uh, with it being in this particular fragrance so this is Vince Kumuto smoked oud at number 10. Next fragrance going to the house of Sisley this is Soir Orient. how many of you know this particular fragrance it's absolutely gorgeous really really beautiful warm spicy rosy fragrance with loads of rose and then incense I think one of the better fragrances here I think nine and so on are going to be very very much so about the rose and incense playing together sometimes you'll find oud come in but in this case it's mostly about the rose and incense and really beautiful here in this particular fragrance lots of it really really intense so it's rose incense saffron galbanum geranium patchouli sandalwood great notes kind of feels a little bit like a sheepra fragrance but more of a warmer ambery take on a sheepra fragrance with the, the notes that are in here definitely noticeable with the incense the rose is very juicy, jammy, and then of course you've got all the ambery touches and the sheeper like touches and bitter green touches in here as well. Swart Orient is wonderful. This is a feminine targeted release. If you're comfortable wearing it, wear it because I think it's quite gorgeous. So Sisley's uh, Swart Orient is at number nine. Next fragrance going to the house of uh, Tiziana Terenzi. This is Ecstasy, this one right here. This is now really, really great. So this to me is like going to a pine forest, oh you know the forest up into the mountains, lots of pine trees, and then you stumble onto this major, major big uh, rose garden, right? <laughs> right next to the rose garden there's a, a church, so you're getting the whiffs of the roses, lots of it, it's baking under the sun, so there's an essence, you know, blooming, the church service is happening and you can smell their incense kind of going off around the church and then you've got all this pine forest smells around it uh, that's exactly kind of what you get with this one which is absolutely delicious this is not one of the more popular Terenzi fragrances but it's definitely a great underrated one I have a re review of this on the channel go find it but mostly it's about incense spruce pine rose amber woodsy notes, earthy notes, patchouli, sandalwood. A great composition, great concoction, very original for a Tiziana Terenzi fragrance and one that is beautiful with the incense in here. This one actually features more incense, uh, more, it's re more resinous and more incensey, lightly smoky in comparison to the rose. So there's a little less rose coming through with this one but that rose brightens up all the kind of like the darker woody resinous notes in here great fragrance Tiziana Terenzi's Ecstasy is at number eight all right next fragrance going to the house of Jazil this is Jala or Gala this one right here I don't know if you know about this particular brand let me know if you do but boy this is a beautiful really really jammy juicy rose contrasted with ouds and also incense a great combination of notes uh, really really beautiful very very long lasting and the rose in here the roses are just really really gorgeous and I feel like it's intensely rosy intensely oudy and then also intensely incensey but Jazil's Gala features oud Indian oud Turkish rose rose incense ambergris patchouli vetiver cedar and sandalwood so in the end it's lots of roses and lots of ouds plus incense so you not only have the rose and incense combo here you've got the rose and oud kind of a thing happening in here as well with some light animalic ambergris in here and of course woods lots of woods so when you got uh you know the rose kind of wearing off it basically settles to more of a woodsy uh, experience great fragrance really really one of my favorites from this house gala from the house of jazil check that out if you don't know it for a great rose and incense experience the next one i'm talking about is from the house of etat libre orange this is spice must flow how many of you know this one 
Uh, Dune is out right now, and I think there's this expression, the spice must flow from that movie. Uh, I, I don't know, I didn't see the latest Dune, I haven't even uh, been following it, but this is uh, about rose and incense with lots of amber and some cinnamon and uh, ginger, uh, basically what it is. But it's an overdose of uh, Turkish rose, smoky resinous incense, and cardamom comes in as well, amber, and then that zingy, spicy, zingy bite of the ginger in here as well. And it smells really, really fantastic. For me, it's really, really ambery. So there's a major ambery component in this particular fragrance. And it blends beautifully with the Turkish rose. Rose is jammy, incense is smoky and resinous. And then that aromatic spice of that cardamom and that bite, the zingy bite of the ginger. Uh, beautiful blend. Um, it wears like a rose amber for me, a smoky rose amber. That's what I get with this one. Spice Must Flow from Etalibre Orange at number six. Let me know if you know that one. This next one's from the house of Fragrance Dubois. This is Parisian. How many of you knows this one? Gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Once again, we got the oud thing happening. So this is a, like an oud rose thing and then also an oud rose incense thing and a rose incense thing, which is basically what this is. But it's beautifully blended, very, very smoothly blended, um, beautiful composition. Uh, and then actually it wears beautifully on me. It smells great on me, off of me. It just kind of projects and I really like the way it does. But it is very, very smooth. And then also it's refined. There's a major refinement about this particular fragrance that there's no rough around the edges parts of it. Just smooth, you know, it's just as smooth. Like when you're drinking some liqueurs, you drink the cheap, cheap stuff and you can kind of tell. And then you go to the more expensive stuff. It's smooth kind of. That's exactly the feeling I get with this one. It's just really, really smooth. And I'm not saying it's an expensive fragrance. That's why it's happening. Because sometimes with expensive fragrances, it happens where it's not smooth. Here it is refined to the max. But rose, incense, oud, cardamom, oak moss, labdanum, geranium, grapefruit, pink pepper. So it's spicy. It's zingy. It's aromatic. And then, of course, it's ambery as well. I think the composition is just gorgeous. Beautifully created. This is Parisian from the House of Fragrance Dubois. Check it out if you don't know it. Now, one of my very first rose and incense fragrances is from the House of uh, Tower Perfumes, which is at number four. It's Incense Rosé. It's not rose, it's rosé. Um, this particular fragrance, to me, is such a fun fragrance. It, there's something fizzy in here about it, and it almost acts like I'm having, um, or, you know, wearing Coca-Cola, like a rose cola. It's just a very, very fizzy, bubbly, effervescent experience in this particular fragrance. And I think there's myrrh in here. Sometimes myrrh acts like this, but it's in addition to the myrrh, there's all the incense and uh, Bulgarian rose that's featured in here. This is definitely one of my favorite tower perfumes, and it's really, really a fantastic smell. If you don't know it, check it out. But it features Bulgarian rose, incense, myrrh, resins, clementine, cardamom, bergamot, cedar, vetiver. What a beautiful composition it is. This is more of a bright experience compared to a lot of other other Tower Perfumes fragrances, and it's to die for delicious. If you don't know it, check it out. It's Tower Perfumes Incense Rosé, hands down one of my favorites from this house, and it smells fantastic. So, Incense Rosé at number four. Next fragrance going to the house of Lorga Parfums. This is Rose de Encens, this one right here. This one to me is basically lots of rose and lots of incense, and it's a beautiful combination, uh, the two together. You, uh, Whereas uh, for this one, the incense to me doesn't get too smoky, but there's lots of it in there. It's more resins. Here you can, you know, experience the smokiness of the resins, which is different than that fragrance, even though they're both kind of similarly named, if that makes sense. But Lorga Parfums, Rose de Ensemble features rose, incense, black currant, raspberry, labdanum, tonka beans, and vanilla. The, the beautiful blending in this one, I feel like it's a great fragrance and it wears beautifully. It's pretty intense, lasts a long time. The rose is very, very jammy, syrupy, contrasted with that kind of dry, resinous incense. 
uh, really, really beautiful. And there are some fruity touches in here, definitely. And of course, it does become ambery in the dry down. Gorgeous fragrance. Check that out. This is Rose d'Ansance from the House of Lorga Parfums. I think it's really, really beautiful. The combination is really, really working. And I never thought it would work until I started enjoying fragrances uh, with that note. And at number two, it is Rose Incense from the House of Amouage. And this is... Not number one, but this is the ultimate in rose and incense. You really experience the rose in, uh, in its jammy qualities. There's some spiciness with the rose in here, but you're also experiencing lots of olibanum in this one, which is basically frankincense. And of course, you're experiencing it in its resinous form, uh, and then also the smoky form as well. But I think it's more resins, and, and you know, versus the uh, burned incense kind of an experience. Really, really beautiful. Very, very intense fragrance. I love the way this one smells, but it features rose, olibanum, incense, elemi, myrrh, sandalwood, vanilla, cedar. So it's mostly very, very woody, dry, resinous ambery and that bright rose comes in it's the most dominant note it's the most prominent note and of course it's in red you know what you're going to have you know this rosiness from this particular fragrance and everything else comes after it all the dark notes beautiful beautiful fragrance this is Amouage's rose incense at number two number one is portrait of a lady amazing fragrance <laughs> This is not about the rose and incense only. It's about patchouli, it's about raspberry, it's about spices, but the combination is overly intoxicating, amazingly intoxicating. So this is perfectly blended. It's smooth, whereas it's also a little abrasive. It's, it's, it could be harsh, but the rose balances it out. The raspberry balances it out. The incense is very, very smoky and also resinous, but truly earthy, woody, sparkly, but then you got this cinnamon in here as well. Beautiful spice, a warm spice. So in, in, in the wearing experience of this one, it's all very, very warm spicy and also kind of like a fresh spicy. So it's kind of like a fusion of warm, warm and fresh together to create this beautifully intoxicating uh, concoction that is to die for. Now, I put this at number one because it's absolutely one of my favorite fragrances and I enjoy it for what it is. In contrast to rose incense, I think it's more about the rose and incense and then all the woods that and ambery touches that come after it. There's a lot more going on in this, but to me, it all is blended beautifully to deserve the number one spot. That's why it's here at number one. So this is a great fragrance, but it's not just about the rose and the incense or the incense and the rose. There's a lot more happening and it smells fantastic. So number one, Frederick Mall portrait of a lady and that is it for today's video let me know if you're into this idea of rose and incense or incense and rose do you have any favorite rose and incense fragrances put some comments down so i can find out and also what do you think about the fragrances i featured in today's video do you like them do you have them or after watching this video would you want to sample them let me know put a comment down so i can find out anyway guys thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please do list below Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, last but not least, I've got one more fragrance for you. It's from the house of Yunks. This is Costas, Red Costas. Do you know about this particular fragrance? Yunks uh, does amazing uh, fragrances, but they're not very distributed. They used to be in the Hotel Coast, and they had a store there. You'd go and sample their fragrances and walk out with a, a pricey fragrance. Really great fragrances created by Olivia Giacobetti. I don't know what's going on. I think they still have an online store, and their fragrances are sold at Lucky Scent. And I think this bottle has changed into a spray bottle. But this particular fragrance is really, really yummy, created by Olivia Giacobetti. It's a lot of peppery notes with incense and rose. And there's also coriander, bay laurel, woods, juniper, and musk. But it's beautiful where it's a uh, smoky in a way that it's smooth smoky resinous in a way that it's not overly gummy and uh extremely kind of like a uh, overdose of resins but it just everything blended beautifully together spices the ambery touches the beautiful jammy rose and it's just a, a darling of a fragrance. I'm putting it here because it doesn't come off overly incense even though it does. And for me, I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, 
pepper or you know peppery notes like black pepper and incense kind of trick me like sometimes I smell incense and it reminds me of black pepper or pepper like white pepper in this case and vice versa so is it really white pepper that I'm smelling in this or is it incense so it's a little tricky but it is a beautiful fragrance it smells really really gorgeous it's, uh, just the composition and the way it's blended together it doesn't it's not like overly intense but a beautiful wear. Anyway, I'm recommending this one. If you can check it out, please do get a sample to sample it. It's it's Red Costas or Costas Costas from the House of Yunks. Anyway, that's the last fragrance I'm talking about today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.